What's up, Bulls Nation? You found yourselves locked on Bulls. I'm Matt. That's my co-host, Big Dave. Up ahead on our Monday episode, lots to break down. Bulls lost three of their last four. We're going to look at some of the larger trends of what this Bulls team is struggling to do in this recent stretch of losses. Is it simply guys not playing like up to their normal standards and a busy schedule, or is it something more problematic than that? That's all ahead on a fresh Locked on Bulls. Let's go. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Here are your hosts, Matt Peck and Big Dave Watson. What's up and welcome into Locked on Bulls, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Matt Peck. You can follow me on Twitter at Bulls underscore Peck. You can follow my co-host Big Dave at Bow, B-A-W-L Sports. You can follow us at Locked on Bulls. You can also, as always, shoot us a text or leave us a voicemail at 331-979-1369 for our weekly mailbag episodes. Today's episode of Locked On Bulls is brought to you in part by Prize Picks. Check out prizepicks.com and use promo code NBA or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. And we thank you for making Locked On Bulls your first listen every day. Big Dave, welcome back from the holiday weekend. How are you, my friend? Did you have a nice Thanksgiving? And uh, are you ready to talk to Bulls Bat? I feel like we haven't talked since like halfway through last week. I miss yeah. you, buddy. I missed you too, man. I really, really did, Matt. Thanksgiving was good. Um, got to see all my family on the Zoom uh, chat thing because my brother went to the Bears game with, with his son and his wife and my uh, nephew's uh, fiance. Uh, mm. Shout out, Emily. And they went to the Bears uh, Detroit game because they live, my nephew lives in uh, Michigan. So they went to that game. But um, yeah, it was good. I have leftovers waiting at another friend's mother's house who who requested I show up and get these <laughs> uh, get these leftovers in reserve. She was like, I need you to come over and get this stuff because she loves me and knows how wow. I get that. <laughs> yes. That's that's awesome. I'm I've already eaten through all of the leftovers that my mom sent me <laughs> on Thursday. Oh, <laughs> how much they did you quick. go home with? How much you going? With? I mean, not a lot. I, I I pretty much just brought home some sides that were left over because my dad, my brother, and I ate through all the meat. Like, of course, at of course. the dinner, we didn't do a turkey. We did a standing a standing roast. So you Ooh. know, we uh, standing roast. You know, pretty much there were just nothing but bones left uh, at the end. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was it was good. Um, obviously, the Bulls have had kind of a rocky holiday weekend uh mm -hmm. it's been more up and down dave the mm -hmm. you know we, we talked about the at the beginning of last week about how the the pacers loss was excusable because it was sort of a schedule loss mm -hmm. the bulls were coming back from that west coast trip it was the second night of a back-to-back etc etc uh and, and then you know we're not going to break down each of these games um in their entirety but i think a lot of bulls fans looked at that loss to houston and said this this is bad. Like, okay, yeah. you get a pass for the Pacers game, but how the heck do you lose to that Rockets team? And meanwhile, the Rockets, yeah, they they snapped a 15 game losing streak against the Bulls, mm -hmm. but they they have been playing close games a lot this season. They've been a playing lot. good teams in close games and coming out on the losing end a lot. And the Bulls simply, uh, you know, we've seen this all the time: a team that thinks they're better than their opponent coming in and saying. We got this. The Bulls screwed around for three and a half quarters, and they got burned. I think hopefully, Dave, that was a lesson learned with that Rockets loss. Yeah, it's a good lesson to have, but it's an inexcusable loss. I'm not going to make excuses for it or, or right. try to defend any of it. It's a bad loss, and for me, it's the first bad loss of the season. One in 15 team, we talked about on the shows previously, Matt, how we wanted them to use this game, maybe even rest some guys. Maybe even mm -hmm. like give some guys a break because they're coming off that gauntlet schedule. You're going right. up against this team that's one in fifteen. They obviously don't have it together yet. They're still figuring things out. But you know, the Bulls went in and they got beat. And what they tried to do, man, you and you said perfectly, they screwed around for three quarters and they thought they could turn it on in the mm -hmm. fourth quarter. They played that game like they were already that damn good. And right. they're not yet 
they're still figuring things out to let people know they're on pace for like 50 plus wins and all that stuff. And they're getting all the accolades and credits. But what you say, you, they were reading their press clippings and they mm-hmm. went in there and they thought in the fourth quarter, we can make these moves. We can make these things, but the Rockets, Kept hitting timely shots in yeah, that man. fourth quarter. Huge three pointers from people I had never seen in my life. Right. And they were hitting huge buckets in that fourth. And it was just honestly, it was a bad loss. And they need to learn that lesson from that loss for sure. Right. And, you know, um, so you, you know, my sister and brother in law live down in Houston. My yeah. brother in law's, uh, you know, a, a, a quasi Rockets fan. He's still trying to deal with the Astros World Series loss, but. He like he texted me the screenshot of the box score and was like question mark. He was like the Rockets put eight guys in double figures and I haven't heard of six of them. Like what the heck? <laughs> and like as you mentioned, timely shots and mm-hmm. and the Bulls surrendered thirty five points in the third quarter, and oh. that is one of many examples of things that you know I want to talk about today. As far as that game was an example of a overarching trend that is problematic. And Billy Donovan talked about after the game. Vooch talked after, about it after the game. Bad third quarters where mm-hmm. the Bulls come out and they are just flat. It seemed like we got rid of the problem from early this season where we were having bad first quarters. Yeah. yeah and, yeah. you know, we're getting off to better starts offensively for the most part now. But, I mean, that third quarter against Houston, you give up all those points and you're careless with the ball because you think you're just going to coast through this game. That is something that this Bulls team, like you said, is not good enough to get away with yet. Yeah, yeah, not yet. Like on paper and all those great things and all those power rankings, you know, yeah, that's nice. But you got to go out there and you got to prove it and you got to show it. You're not to the level of a Golden State yet who can bench everybody and then go to Detroit and still win. You know, right. you're not to that level yet. Like you you don't have the cachet yet to come out and 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 act that kind of way and in that fashion at the team. No, every game has to be a serious business thing. You know, you can't even come out like the Lakers. You know what I'm saying? The Lakers can can play like they're playing right now. And you're still worried about the Lakers mm. because they're the Lakers. You know what I'm saying? So the Bulls have to earn that first before they can get that. But what you said about third quarters is very important because, again, that is the quarter where good teams take over the game. That mm-hmm. is the quarter where those teams who know how to win, they come out in that third quarter and they send you home. That's right. exactly. Remember, we saw that in that in that uh, Golden State game. I believe mm-hmm. it was 49-42 at half. It was right. over in the third yeah. quarter. It was a wrap. That was a done deal. That's what good teams do. They run you out the gym. We watched it our whole lives, Matt, early on in our lives, watching right. Michael Jordan and Scotty and all those guys do it in the third quarter. Fourth right. quarter, they got ice bags on their knees. We know what this is. So the Bulls have to get that together because the third quarter is the quarter where you're supposed to put that game away. Yeah, and instead, the Bulls played no defense in the third quarter, and they let the Rockets hang around, and they gave the Rockets the confidence that they could finally win a game, and and, yeah. and the Bulls got burned for it. Uh, all right, I want to talk about a couple of other things. We got to get to some thoughts on the Bulls' two games over the weekend against the Florida teams, the blowout win in Orlando, and then the, the tight loss uh, against the Heat back home on Saturday. We will do all of that up ahead. Uh, first, though, I mentioned it at the top of the show, today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, which has the best NBA DFS prop game on the market. Prize Picks offers more NBA props than any other DFS prop operator and offers all the superstar players as well as bench players only recording a handful of minutes in each game. So if you want to start playing, use promo code NBA when you sign up and make your first deposit. And Prize Picks will get a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 in your account for you. Pick two to five players and then over and under on their projections. And you can win up to 10x on any on any entry, and it's just you versus those projected numbers. Prize Picks even allows mixed sport entries. So you could take the over on number of Russell Wilson passing yards in Monday, Monday Night Football tonight and the over on Lonzo Ball assists in the Bulls, Pel, uh, in the Bulls uh, Hornets game we got on deck tonight. Bunch of fun and, and always a, a simple way to get yourself into the game by having some fun. Use the award-winning app on both the App Store and Google Play. Entries can be made in sixty seconds or less. It's that easy. Prize Picks is safe and offers fast withdrawal, so don't hesitate. Check out PrizePicks.com. Or go to your app store and download the app today. And remember to use that promo code NBA for your 100% 
instant deposit match up to $100. Prize picks. Mm. It's daily fantasy. Made easy. Mm. I know what you were doing this weekend. You were sitting around with your gut out to here, mm. with your sweatpants on, you know, laying down on your big comfy couch or in your recliner, and you wanted to just watch football, and you just wanted to watch all your cool movies, and you just wanted to watch all your cool shows. But, oh, but no, you couldn't do it. Why? Because you didn't know the login password, and you weren't about to get up off the couch to get that other remote that's sitting across the room on the other TV. Why? Because your gut said, sit down. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to remove all that for you, y'all. I got something for you. You know what it's called? Direct TV stream. And it brings together all your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch all your favorite sports, your favorite movies, and all your favorite shows all in one place. That means no more juggling those remotes. No need to buy another device ever again. All right? And the best part, the best part, the best part, no annual contract. Boom. Hmm. And there it is. Get rid of that clutter. Get rid of that confusion and get it together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. All right, moving along. We got to talk about these games uh, against both of the Florida teams. Uh, so, Big Dave, after the Rockets loss, I tweeted. Can we just skip this Bears Thanksgiving game and go straight to the Bulls beating you <laughs> Magic by 30? Because I was so fuming at, at, about that Rockets loss. And I had a bunch of Bulls fans in my replies saying, I, you know, I wouldn't be so sure that we're going to beat Orlando by 30 based on the way that we've been playing in some of these recent stretch of games. Oh, and, no. you know, I, I didn't say anything. I didn't okay. pick a fight or whatever. But I was just sitting there. I was like, we're beating Orlando by 30. Yeah, dude. Are you like, for real? Yeah. <laughs> the Bulls are, are are coming off of some bad losses here. You want to call the Indiana schedule loss fine. The Rockets loss was a bad loss. Yeah. You're going to beat Orlando by 30. Yeah. And congratulations, Wendell, who had 26 and 10. Proud of you, buddy. Mm -hmm. Vooch, come home game, you know, uh, playing against his former team. Certainly an emotional night for him. He got a, a video tribute down in Orlando. He had one of his better games this season, 16 on 7 of 13. Um, we'll, we'll talk about Vooch more as we move on to, to the Heat because I think he's key for, for the Bulls moving forward. Oh, but no question. No question. I, like, this was a game where the Bulls had to tell themselves, we're better than this. And Orlando, good for you, Wendell. Glad you have a fresh start. We are better than this team, and we are coming in pissed about that disgusting display and what did you see in particular the bulls had what like i think a nine point lead at halftime come on third man qu third quarter put oh. their foots down <laughs> ah yes oh that's oh I, I so love the fact that we haven't done this in, in, a, in a few days but yet we are still right here you hear me right here that third quarter it was a wrap City. That is what we just talked about, guys. And we saw Wendell in that first half. And Wendell had the game I thought he was going to have. You know, I think we all thought he was going to come out, you know, and, and, you know, on fire. You know what I mean? You want to yeah. beat your former team. I think it's going to be like, like that when they play Cleveland. I think it's going to be the same way. Larry's going to come out fit, uh, on fire. If he's, if he's able to play, he'll be out there, you know what I'm saying, trying to come out on fire. Dan Gafford, you know, whenever. When you're playing your old team, you come out with some fire. That's what mm -hmm. it's going to be. But my thing was, after the first half that he had, I'm like, okay, after put what do you have like 16 or 18 and nine? Mm -hmm. and, and like the first, I'm like, okay, he's either gonna score about six more points or he's going to have 40. <laughs> and I was like, I'm leaning towards six more points though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sure enough, it was about he got about like six or eight more points in. Then, you know, but a great game by him, honestly. I'm glad he got some glasses. Shout out to John Sabine, who was the only human being that was saying that that man needed glasses or LASIK. He was the only person. Nobody else was saying this. He is the only one. Give John Sabine his credit, all right? He said it all the time, all the time. But third quarter, Matt, they came out and said, hell no. <laughs> you know what we just went through with the Rockets? You know what we just went through with Indiana? We are better than this, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't know what was said, but I'm sure something was said. And I don't know who said it, but my money is on Billy Donovan. <laughs> Saying, dude, what, what do y'all think? Y'all think I'm just here to, to look cool with my hair? No, I'm here to coach, and we're we going to win this game tonight. So right. they went to the third quarter, Matt. 
and it was just straight up destruction and terror. And they carried it on to that fourth quarter. Um, the other uh, big highlight for me from the from the Magic game, other than it was a get right game where the Bulls did the job in front of them, which was get right and blow out a team that they were superior to. Mm-hmm. Another beautiful example of the people saying trade Kobe being <laughs> over the top reactionary people saying Kobe sucks. Yeah. Hey, Hey, how about, how about 20 points on nine of 11 from the field? How about you remember that this kid had off season shoulder surgery, missed mm-hmm. all of training camp and mm-hmm. is playing with an entirely new set of teammates trying to figure out his role on a brand new team. And yeah, he had a little rust to knock off. Yeah, it's going to take a handful of games. Oh, remember remember the Kobe White that could easily drop 20? Once he's in to his swing, he could easily have 30-point nights. And this Bulls bench has been so depleted of scoring options. And that's the guy that you are so quick to get to want to get rid of right now? Kobe White. I know we had a rough shooting night against Miami. We'll get to that in a minute. But sure. this Orlando game reminded everyone out there, why y'all so quick? To say Kobe doesn't have it. To say mm. Kobe is bad. To say Kobe this, Kobe that, trade Kobe, trade Kobe, trade. This kid, just give him some time. Mm. That's all he needs, Matt. Matt, and it wasn't the fact that he got 20. It was the way he was getting those buckets. Oh. That was vintage Kobe White, the way he was getting those buckets, Matt. Those step backs and crossovers he was putting on them were vicious. I'm talking about that one on the baseline in the fourth quarter. That step back, oh, hit, I watched filthy. that like five, six times. Man. Oh, he had his he, he had his runner game going, like making yeah. shots, making runners in the lane, like mm-hmm. ev- every every nook and cranny of ways that we saw Kobe score the basketball in his first two NBA seasons. He was doing in that game against the uh, the Magic. Absolutely. And and I love and once again, I love how guys are looking for him. This team is very good at encouraging, you know, what I'm saying their fellow players and getting everybody involved. The way Caruso looks for him and tries to get him that basketball is key. And the way he celebrates, he celebrates more than Kobe when he hits the shot. Caruso is charged with Kobe's hitting threes. Lonzo Ball out there looking for him, getting him the ball and letting him uh, do what he needs to do. But, I mean, that's, this is what we said, what it's going to look like, guys. There's going to be ups. There's going to be downs because he has to figure out, you know what I'm saying, where he's comfortable. He's trying to get reacclimated to the game. He hasn't played in six months. It's the first time he's had a severe injury in his career. This is all brand new to him. So just like anything new, it's going to take some time to figure out exactly where everything needs to be and how everything needs to go. But this was a great indicator, though, Matt of what you can get from Kobe White when Kobe White is feeling it. He was feeling it, and it looked good, man. It looked real good. It did. Um, And the other thing that I have seen uh, in in small sample size so far is Kobe and Vooch picking up where they left off a little bit, where they got to develop some chemistry, especially when Kobe was in there and Zach – had to miss those dozen games in the health and safety protocol at the tail end of last season after we got Vooch in the trade. And Kobe and Vooch had themselves a nice little two-man game that they were building up. And you've seen some of that in this recent stretch of games where not only is Kobe finding himself uh, his confidence again to shoot and look for his shots on the floor, but also finding some moments to be uh, a little bit more of a playmaking guard as well. We're not putting the full responsibility that we did last season on Kobe to say, you're our team's starting point guard. Not only do we need you to score every night, but we need you to get looks for your teammates. But even just a handful of moments in the last few games where you see him and Vooch play play a little bit of two-man stuff. And Mm -hmm. something that we didn't really ever see Kobe get to do with Wendell or with anybody, really, that was as competent and capable as Vooch has been. And I think it'll be... Uh, a, a safety valve that the Bulls can continue relying on, uh, especially in some certain instances, Big Dave, where the Bulls have seen a lot of zone defense in this recent stretch of games. I think coaches are starting to scout and look at game tape now re- uh, recently seeing that it's given the Bulls some trouble. Mm-hmm. And and we got to talk about ways that the Bulls can get themselves past these struggles on the zone defense. So we will yeah. do that uh, in, in just one second. But kudos to Kobe for that game he had against Orlando. Uh, okay. Ah! 
Yeah! Today's episode is also brought to y'all by Bilt Bar. Bilt it's Bar! here. The best Monday of the year, everybody. It's Cyber Monday. That's right now. That's today. And Bilt.com is the place to aim your mouse. Get at least 20% off Ooh. everything delicious and healthy. That's 20% off site-wide. And even bigger discounts on Built Boost, Built Broth, and Built Swag. A brand new mm. Built Bar flavor has just landed in time for Cyber Monday. Caramel Almond Delight. It oh. delivers everything it promises to, Big Dave. Caramelized chocolate. Check. Almonds. Check. Delightful. A double check. Be sure <laughs> to get yours before they are gone because they'll go fast. These Caramel Almond Delight Built Bars, just 150 calories and 17 grams of protein packed into every bar. And this mm. season, maybe you're craving some white chocolate. Mm. For a limited time, get a special new Built Bar Puffs flavor white chocolate cheesecake. The yummy protein Aww. treat filled with marshmallowy goodness in the center and covered in white chocolate. Aww. Only 140 calories and, yes, 17 grams of protein in that white chocolate puff bar. Tis the season oh. to save and to give your taste buds the gift of delicious built bars. So go to built.com for these incredible tasting new bars and 20% off everything. Head to built.com and a promo code LOCKED20 before it's too late. Woo! Woo! Man, built bar be doing it. Man, but I'll tell you what, guys, tis the season. For you to go ahead and make some money by putting it down on these sports teams out here, y'all. And guess what? There's only one place to go. Only one place you can do it. One place that you need to be at to get your money. And that is Bet Online, who has you covered all holiday season. More props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all sports action this holiday season. So head to our new updated desktop or mobile website and sign on up and receive your 50, that's 50% welcome bonus with the promo code locked on. All right. Don't forget that locked on is the promo code you need to get your 50% welcome bonus. And guess what, y'all? It ain't just football. Oh, no, 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 no. Bet Online has pro, college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, tennis handball, anything they're doing on the Ocho, you can put money on here, all right? Even your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait. Take advantage of all the amazing offers available to, available to you this 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and it's the easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. Bet online. Get your money. Mm, 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 sports. Mm. Get paid. Oh, so many great holiday deals going on right now, Dave. Uh, it's everywhere, Matt. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> uh, eh. All right. So uh, as we're talking about, we got to talk a bit, bit, a little bit about this heat game and this 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 problematic trend we're seeing, Big Dave, mm. with uh, a lot of these zone defenses that the Bulls are struggling against. The Bulls half court offense, we know is a work in progress, and it hasn't been great. A lot so far has just been a lot of DeMar Iso finding his spots, a lot of Zach Iso finding his spots. There hasn't been a successful flow to this Bulls half-court offense yet. And again, we're only a quarter of the way through the season, and this is a lot of new parts that Billy's trying to figure out, and everybody's trying to figure out what their role is. Clearly, with that being the case, defenses are having a, a fair amount of success throwing zone packages at the Bulls. We saw Zach really struggle with the box and one that the Warriors showed him and the Bulls blowout loss to the Warriors. And this Heat team played a kind of like condensed zone on Saturday where they just packed the paint and didn't really let people get to their spots. And guess what? There are two ways simply that you can beat zone defenses, Dave. You shoot over them with elite shooting around the perimeter, or you pass out of them. Mm -hmm. And right now, the Bulls don't really have either of those things because mm -hmm. Vooch is still trying to get his feel back in the game. And Vooch, as the sort of you know fulcrum of that Bulls offense, operating from the high post at times, is not fully comfortable yet. Mind you, guy's still getting over COVID. He did not have an asymptomatic case. He had COVID symptoms and is yeah. still trying to work his way back. But between that and the slump that Vooch started the season with, he is not really 
the player the Bulls need him to be to beat zone defenses right now. And the Bulls, as a team shooting, are not doing what they need to do to beat zone defenses right now. Oh, man. You're you're so right. It's a lot to unpack right there. Um, Let me start with the zone defense. Yeah, they are struggling with it. And you usually don't see it work to this level of the NBA because the NBA shooting. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like guys are going to shoot you out of a zone and you'll be back to doing your thing. But the Bulls obviously are struggling with that. You know what I'm saying? I didn't like the, the fact I saw DeMar take a bunch of three-pointers. I thought he took way too many three-pointers in that heat game. Oh, for four. Yeah, that's too many for me. I don't need you taking four. Two, we good. Two, you know what I'm saying? Two is okay. If you're two, knocking I'm down smooth. 35 36%, take right. two. Take two, we smooth. You know what I'm saying? Um, but they really, really, really did struggle with that. Here's the positive of it, because y'all know I am annoyingly positive. Here's the positive of what I saw in that, Matt. The fact that this is happening now, Mm-hmm. And this isn't happening later in the season is good for me because I'm like, team, okay, we teams are already saying we got to show you now what we need to do to beat this team because this team is damn good. Mm-hmm. We need to pull this out now. Oh my god, we got to stop them. All right. The fact that we now know it is the zone that is struggling with us. Now we've got a base in plan. Billy Donovan talked about this. Like now we know we it's on me. He was like, it's on me. You know what I'm saying? To figure this thing out and and fix this and get this job developed, which I have full faith in. The other thing is what you said, Matt, was Vooch. He is the key for me for all of this, all of these things. Vooch for me had his worst game. I know people have been eating Vooch alive. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and I'm telling you, relax. For this one, for me, I thought was, was his worst game. And again, I know it's COVID related. <laughs> I mm-hmm. get it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm not bashing him. I'm not trying to bash him on this. But my issue with it was, I hated to see him passing out so many times, Matt. He was extremely mm. passive and not a, the aggressive um, uh, post player we saw. There were many times he would have a little person on him and he would be yeah. in the paint and he would get the ball and he's kicking it back out. He wasn't even thinking about scoring. The one time I saw him get in and thought about scoring, he had Jimmy Butler on it. Jimmy Butler just went around him and stole it and then went the other way. Mm-hmm. I wanted Vooch to be much more aggressive in that game, and he wasn't. Now, whether that was because of COVID and him getting reacclimated, I don't know. But I just didn't like the fact that it was passive. I don't care. You know me, Matt. Like I say it about Tony Bradley. I don't care if you miss the shot. I don't care if you throw it in the 14th row. I don't care. But I need you to be aggressive in what you're doing out there on the floor. And that was the first time this season I thought Vooch wasn't completely aggressive in, in what he was doing out there on the floor. And again, maybe it's COVID. And he's getting reacclimated, but it was the first time um, that I saw that. But he is the key to all yeah. of this because now, not only can can he post you and do his thing inside, he will shoot you out of a zone because he shoots forty percent like that from three. He can shoot, so he's got to get back to that. He answers a lot of those questions. But yeah, again, Matt, I like the fact that it was early. I like the fact that teams have to show this now because because they can't wait. And, and then spring things on you later in the playoffs and say, ha, right. we watch y'all season long. Ha, this is what we can do. No, you got to show the Bulls this stuff now. And all this said, the Bulls lost by three. Right, <laughs> right. That 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 is, I guess, the silver lining here is the Bulls did not shoot well. Um, they did not take care of the basketball. They turned the ball over 22 times against that's Miami. Right. And that's a flip that got scripted on – a script that got flipped that got on scripted, flipped baby. Hey, scripted. I like it's, it. <laughs> it's clearly a Monday, y'all. Uh, <laughs> it is a script that got flipped against the Bulls, whereas most nights, a way that they can give themselves a leg up on their opponents is creating those turnovers. Alex and Lonzo's defense and getting out in transition because this Bulls transition offense, best in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Best in the NBA. No, like, no exaggeration. The Bulls transition offense is lethal. We've seen mm-hmm. that with a large enough sample size now. Mm-hmm. But if they don't create those turnovers, kudos to the Heat, who only had 10 turnovers as a team on Saturday, kudos. then you you are stuck trying to slog through your half-court offense when you're struggling to beat the zone, and that's what happened. Instead right. of the Bulls being the team to create those turnovers and easy buckets, the Heat did that to us, and that is going to result in the Bulls having a, a tough time to win. But like you said, despite that, despite the poor shooting, the Bulls were still in this one against a very good team. This Heat team is a very good team. You mentioned DeMar taking too many threes, and I agree with you. Four 
not not what you're looking for from from Demar. That's not his game. He had a pretty efficient night. Otherwise, you take away his yeah. four missed threes, and he was eleven of fifteen from the field and six of seven at the free throw line. That's the Demar you want. Exactly. But outside of Zach Levine and Alex Caruso, Dave, who combined to go seven of fourteen from downtown, mm-hmm. you know what the rest of the Bulls outside of Zach and Caruso shot from behind the three point line on Saturday? What's that? Four of 25. Four That's of 25. You're not, not going to beat a zone defense if you're doing <laughs> that from behind the three-point line. My goodness. Yeah, and they and the Heat also used this game to get Duncan Robinson off, you know what I'm saying, off the skid that he was on because he hadn't been shooting well uh, mm-hmm. for a while. Well, and, and they, they threw him into the starting shot. lineup because Tyler yeah. Hero was a late scratch. Yeah, and that's another key point I wanted to point out. Without Tyler Hero being there, you know what I'm saying? The, the Heat were still, you know, looking like they were. Because Tyler Hero has been great for them this season, man. I believe he's averaging over 20 off the bench. He's he's really been great for them. Um, when, And when we play them again, that's going to be a real, real key thing to see when we get him back out there on the floor. That's going to be key. But for me, Matt, the reason I, I still like the way the Bulls played and all that, because I'm looking at the Heat, and it wasn't like they were killing them. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Jimmy Butler didn't have a, you know, spectacular game. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he's starting to do that little – little dirty trick stuff too man I don't, I don't like that i had an issue with that he get away with it you know what i'm saying so shout out to him you know what i'm saying you get away with it but but yeah but anyway i'm like okay we got beat by matt Struess and gabe vincent that's who beat us okay that's who beat the chicago bulls was matt Struess, who was coming off of matt Struess night at DePaul. you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying and then gabe vincent who i wouldn't have been able to point out if you showed me 15 pictures in a row of him, I still right. wouldn't be able to point him out in the lineup. All right. I don't and, know who this person is. And he had 20 points off the bench. He was four of eight from downtown. I mean, Bald. yeah. The Heat, the Heat know how to find players, man. They just do. Man, I mean, they do. Yeah, man. They, but all their career, that's what they've been doing. Like, even before Hassan Whiteside. You know yeah. What I'm like, my God, they, they find players. I knew when Matt Struess went there, I said, that's a perfect place for him perfect he's a shooter who plays hard and that's all pat riley likes you know what i'm saying so yeah i was like he's gonna he's gonna shine there and and he has been he's gonna get his money too and i'm very very happy for him for for doing this thing but but yeah man like i'm it was just honestly a playoff game it felt like a playoff game to me watching it uh it felt like the it felt like that four point lead felt like eight when when the heat had it you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. and the bulls just couldn't get over that hump zach levine matt was ugh. (laughs) yeah yeah you know yeah. what I'm saying? That was that was the last thing I wanted to touch on with you uh was Zach's game on Saturday. Um six of sixteen for sixteen mm. points. Mm. He did knock down four of ten threes, but other than that, just one of those nights where there's there's some some chatter on Bulls Twitter of people being like, Man, Zach still has these games where shot selection is a problem, mm. where Zach's hero ball stuff is not what the Bulls need. And certainly, Zach, when he's tried to get his looks against zone defenses this season, and, and Miami was the latest example, really struggles. And yeah. again, it's it's another thing. Just like Vooch trying to find the confidence in playing his new role, Zach needs to find the best ways to embrace his new role. Like, Zach's still scoring in bunches this season. Yeah, and, and for the most part, he's still being efficient this season. But he has certain stretches where he is thinking, okay, now it's time for me to go out there and get my shots. Yeah, And he, and he forces bad shots that he doesn't need to force. But I think he still is trying to untrain his brain to feel like every night he's got to go out there and he's got to take shots like that because he doesn't have any help. Because yeah. up until about... Two months ago, when this season started, he didn't have any help. I think, Matt, he also wanted to have a game because every time they played against Jimmy Butler, those two guys usually duel. You right. know what I'm saying? That's and true. they usually go at it. And Going back usually- to like when Jimmy was in Minnesota and Zach was yeah. fresh off his ACL, his first season yeah. here. Like yeah. that game was a Zach versus Jimmy duel, and yeah. it was it was entertaining. Zach put up points. Jimmy put up points. But, yeah, maybe that's still an, an element to why Zach was maybe pushing things a little bit. Yeah. And, again, that, but that's, again, that's why I like it that it's happening now. And that, that's why it's happening in November. 
You know what I'm saying? And again, I need Bulls fans to know it's November. <laughs> I need them to know that as well. It's November, guys. Relax. Y'all, I know December's around the corner, but you, chill. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we're getting it together. They're getting it together. Um, They're still on pace to win, what, 51 games, which is stupid. Um, But, yeah, they're, they're getting it together, and they're figuring this thing out because there's still a lot to figure out, which is what we've continued to say on here. Like, you got to give these guys patience. You got to give these guys time. They still got a lot to figure out as far as their offense is concerned, as far as who needs to be in where. We still don't know if Javante Green is the permanent fixture at power forward. You know what I'm saying? We still don't right. know uh, who they're going to put in that spot. We don't know. You know, some games Caruso is going to have it. Some game he isn't. We don't know if Kobe White uh, uh, is is ready yet. And, and we've shown he's been very up and down. So everybody's just trying to get it together now. And I appreciate the fact that – and this is the one thing I wanted to say, Matt. I like how the Bulls have responded after those kind of losses where I'm like, okay, that's a ridiculous bad loss or a tough loss. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? First one I thought of was Golden State. And after that loss, what did they do? They went to L.A. and they won both those games. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, the one against Portland. That, that, that was a very, very tough loss. What they Bounce do, back they, by beating the Nuggets in Denver, which, like, nobody does. Nobody does. <laughs> All right, beat the Nuggets in Denver and then came home beat the Knicks. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like the response. When they – the Rockets game, bad loss. What they do, went out and whipped Orlando by 30. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying this is a bad loss because it isn't. It's just a tough loss, you know what I'm saying, because you played a really – you play arguably the best team in the Eastern Conference, mm-hmm. and you were with them the entire game, and you had an off game, and you lost to Gabe Vincent. So it, it's hard for me to be upset about this, I don't, about that, but definitely you saw what needs to be worked on, and definitely starting at that zone defense, Matt, because it is a problem, and I think the Bulls will correct it, but it's definitely a problem. Yeah, I mean – I think you have to zoom out a little bit and remember just how brutal this November schedule was. We talked about it as they were getting ready for this month of November and and what could have been fair expectations and what we would take as a win. The Bulls are 13 and 8. 13 and 8 coming off of just an absolutely brutal stretch of schedule. I think I saw this... um, I think either before the the Orlando game or before the Heat game, somebody was talking about the Bulls' remaining schedule. So, okay, we're a quarter of the way through. The final three quarters of the schedule, the Bulls have the second easiest strength of opponent schedule on the NBA roster because we just took care of a lot of the difficult stretches. Yeah. And I'm not saying that that is going to mean the Bulls are going to, you know, like go tear off a zillion wins or or some crazy winning streak or something like that, but just – you should be optimistic that we all knew November was going to be brutal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We're almost through November, and the Bulls are 13-8 and eight and a game and a half out of the top seed in the East. Ew, that's beautiful, Matt. And, and also, and we're not, and again, Matt's not neglecting the fact we still got to play Milwaukee. We still got to play the Heat some more. Uh, you know, the Nets are still there. You know, those, those comeback games against uh, Golden State. Those things are still going to happen. But the right. fact that you threw that gauntlet, and not just the gauntlet, Matt, of the games, it was the gauntlet of the games and when they were scheduled. First of all, how are you playing two Florida teams and you just don't have both games in Florida? I right. just didn't understand. That makes absolutely no sense to me. But there it is. But that schedule was brutal, Matt, because also the games, but also the back-to-backs, the Knicks, yep. then the Pacers. Then you said mm-hmm. Orlando. Then I'm gonna give you the heat. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it's yeah. ba- and then I'll make you travel to do it. Right. You know what I'm yeah. like, it's been a brutal schedule. So now this week, you see it's starting to come down a little because after the Hornets, I believe you get two games off, which I don't Tuesday, think Tuesday had. Wednesday off. Yeah. If they had a minute and then they play Thursday and then they get another I game think, off on Saturday. I think the Bulls have had more back to back games than they have had back to back off days so far this season. Like that might be a slight exaggeration, but it really wow. doesn't feel like it, does it? Wow. Like, oh, <laughs> se- you know, seven games in 10 days. You got back to back and then off on off and then another back to back. Like it mm-hmm. was crazy. It was a crazy November. And the Bulls, if they can, you know, win against Charlotte tonight. And come out of November 14 and 8. That is a win. Of course, yes, the, the East is a gauntlet. I mentioned that the Bulls are a game and a half back of Brooklyn for the top seed in the East at 13 and 8. 
They're also only two and a half games ahead of Philly, who currently sits tied with Cleveland for 10th and 11th at 10 and 10. Wow. The 10th and 11th seeds in the East wow. are 10 and 10. Wow. Our guy, John Sabine, always says, abolish the abolish the East, abolish the West. Hey, guess what? 10, 10 and 10 right now, good enough for 7th in the West. Mm. What's, up, What's up, John? This, this Easter insane. conference is no joke, man. It is it no is joke. It is not. And also, I just want to say to people tonight, make sure you enjoy the ball bowl. Because that's what I'm calling it, man. It is the ball bowl. I'm going to tweet that out on Twitter. I'm going to put the hashtag down, man. It's the ball bowl, baby. And it's going down tonight. You know LeVar is going to be in the house. And Matt's favorite person in the world will be in the house. And I can't wait to watch it. The ball bowl. You know it's going down. Ooh. Never never lost, supposedly. Never <laughs> lost. He, said he will not lose on this, Matt. He's not losing. He's not I losing. Just, I lost. just saw something on Twitter this morning where he was talking about, like, yeah, I want to get all my – I want to get all three of my sons playing in Chicago. I was like, oh, my God. Mm. How about <laughs> – about, I mean, I love I love LaMelo. LaMelo. He's a great player. Yeah, but... man, come on. You can find room for LiAngelo. If I, we have room for Felicio, we can have room for LiAngelo, all right? I got room. If you got room but for that's this. the thing. We shouldn't have had room for Felicio <laughs> ever, Dave. And we don't anymore. That's a fair point. You're right, Matt. Oh. But he's better. But he's better Goodness. than that. And he can sit there. <laughs> All right. That, that's it for today. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, and, and hopefully everybody enjoys Bulls Hornets tonight. Lonzo and LaMelo going at it. Hopefully we'll be back tomorrow talking about a Bulls W to wrap out the month of November. In the meantime, hit us up on Twitter. I'm at Bulls underscore Peck. Dave is at Bow, B-A-W-L Sports. Bow. We are at Locked on Bulls. And you can hit us up on that text to voicemail line, 331-979-1369. Thanks for listening, as always. And subscribe to us on that YouTube channel if you haven't already. For Dave, I'm Matt. See Red be good. Peace out. <laughs> Lee Angelo. <laughs>